Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for the grand final of the Intel X3 Masters World Championship Katowice? I'm ready as well. What a final we have on our hands here once again. It's turning in to a modern classic, SKT versus Fnatic, the underdogs versus the world champions. I know you guys are ready. This is what they're fighting for the cup. We just saw the wonderful video of how it was made, but we are gonna preview the games over with our experts. We're almost there, just a little bit. Hold on. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sharks. Uh, welcome to the expert desk. I've made a few modifications. You might say I may have boosted the ELO as I've been joined here by Dexter, Mithy, and Crepo for the championship series. It is a best of five. That's what it takes to replace one Korean analyst, three <laughs> European players. <laughs> well, SK Telecom will be on the blue side for game one. They're up against Fnatic and Look, what are Fnatic's chances? I mean, they're surprising everybody. Dexter and, and Mithy, let's start with you guys. Do you believe in the magic? I don't want to predict first. I, I made that mistake like uh, <laughs> yesterday already. But uh, honestly, I think uh, SKT should be fairly convincingly take this, just objectively speaking. They're like a lot more complete team. And I think uh, they played the mid game a lot cleaner than all the other teams Fnatic played so far. Fnatic just have something magical though, Mithy. Do you think they can keep growing, keep getting better? I, I agree with Dexter. I think SKT is just overall better, but it just kind of feels like Fnatic is learning game, game after game. It, it feels like they're becoming better and better, and maybe, maybe they take a game off SKT. I don't think it's going to be a clean final. Yeah, rapid progression here from Fnatic, but if we look at the way they won their games against RNG, it is RNG not buying into the macro game, though. Like that phase where they kept laning uh, 2v2, 1v1 instead of your cross mapping, trading towers, those are not mistakes I feel this SKT is making. Also, I'm just so impressed with Blank this tournament. Really knows exactly what jungle gamp to go for at every single point in the early game, whether it's his own in the enemy jungler, contest the buff, challenge, just put some pressure. He's playing phenomenally. Bang will put so much pressure on Reckless too. I do think SKT still need to uh, also bandage in. Just don't play into any of these unconventional picks, because if they play the similar styles, SKT will just be a better version. Yeah, and Fnatic seems to be surprising everybody with that Jin. Now we've had some time to look at it. We see them, you know, playing with it more. Uh, Mithy, did you guys talk about the Jin at all? Did you talk about maybe some of the picks and bans and how they, the, the tournament's gone? Uh, what's your take of the, a night's rest? Uh, I, I was talking this morning to Sven, and he was saying, like, what the hell, Fnatic is in the finals? <laughs> is Jin OP? I will play Jin every game now. <laughs> well, when I talked but last week to Sven, I was like, yo, Jin is actually really strong. I think this pick is fantastic. Yeah, but uh, I don't know. I think this champ uh, outside of laning phase is a bit unlucky sometimes. So <laughs> that's what uh, Neil said to me. Why is unlucky the excuse for everything when it goes wrong? Never lucky. Never lucky. Never yeah. lucky. <laughs> Never lucky. Uh, so out there for you guys, the players are set up on stage. They're just busy getting ready backstage for the player walk-ins for the championship series. Uh, the, the title is all online. It's Intel Extreme Masters 2016 Season 10 World Champion. SKT have done a lot great. They've played four games. They absolutely smashed TSM earlier today. Dexter, where do they start to look? I mean, do SKT fear Jin? I think they should just because that's just force um, Fnatic to be on more standard heroes and then they know they're gonna be outclassing Fnatic anyway I think in most of the lanes but um, yeah I mean it, it all depends on what they want to do and want to accomplish I mean maybe they just test the waters game one see how the Jin is doing if it's like too much of a problem you just ban it away yeah, have, you, have you got a chance to watch much of the lane swaps? Uh, Mithy, I, I want to uh, talk, the, the casting team has talked extensively about the lane swaps, and one of the things that's come up is how you trade towers, you go for the inner, and there's their play where one team will take Dragon, one team can take uh, Rift Herald, and then you push another inner turret. Is this the next evolution? Is this the, the perfect step? Like, how do you start breaking down what the next steps are in lane swap and how, then how you I mean, counter them I mean, do you really well? want to ask that to an origin support at this point? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Those that can't do, teach yeah <laughs> okay okay uh, I'll, I'll just take it i'll just take it for now it'll be my turn uh, so uh, it's just in general you wanna you wanna just push out to the dual lane so you wanna just take as many objectives as you can while pushing out with the dual lane and defending with your top laner that's the main like the easiest thing about the lane so like like to to, to sum it up you know defend with the top laner on tier two push with the uh, push with the dual lane on on tier twos and uh, what, what that gives you is that you can walk in the enemy jungle because you always have man priority and you have the TP of your top laner to get deep wards 
and then through that deep wires you can then get the Herald, get the Drake, and since team don't want to be on the defensive, because if you're on the defensive, you're still going to uh, lose the jungle, for, for, like, because they're, they're just going to have man priority and they're going to have the pressure in terms of waves, what you end up doing is you're just trading, because you, you don't want to play on the defensive side, because the game right now, the meta is not about being Thank defensive, it's about being as proactive as possible. And that's kind of how the meta is evolving right now. Everyone is just trading, okay. trading, 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 and like eventually. That. We heard uh, the Costa Disc as well previously saying if you're not playing aggressively, you're already losing. Yeah, if you're if you're just defending, you're you're always losing a little bit. It's yeah. just like Mithy said right here. You know, you will lose your jungle. Um, eventually, Fnatic has made that really good play earlier too. When when you're trading, the Rift Herald kind of accelerates one part of that trade. That is the only thing that kind of changes. Well, hold the thought on the Rift Herald because I have it. just got the note that the players are already backstage. So Shocks, let's introduce them. Thank you so much, Trevor. It is indeed time to meet our teams for the grand final of the Intel X3 Masters World Championship. First up on the one side, a team that everyone had expected to make it far, but they decimated the competition. They have never lost a best of series to a Western team yet. Ladies and gentlemen, it's SK Telecom T1. Next up, a team that we hadn't expected in the final to get that far. The first match they played, but they grew throughout the tournament. Something clicked playing here in Katowice in front of this amazing crowd. Five-time EULCS champions, but can they beat SKT? Ladies and gentlemen, give them a hand, Team Fnatic. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time for your grand finalists for the Intel X3 Masters World Championship here in Katowice, SKT and Fnatic. Thank you so much, Sharks. It is a best of five. And if you guys want to keep up to date with picks, bands, scores, news, and all the information, check out the Score Esports apps available on iOS and Google Play. So I mentioned it already. SKT, they are on the blue side for game one. Uh, we've talked extensively about the Jin. We saw Spirits Lee Sin yesterday. It was also target band removed from him uh, earlier today. So, Crepo, where do SKT start, or what are you expecting to see from the draft? I mean, they just they just want to build on, on the foundation that they have, which is five incredible players, so SKT can do anything. Like, some of these teams come in and are like, yeah, they team fight, they team fight, they team fight. SKT, they can play split push with Duke, they can also play team fight. Uh, whatever they do, Wolf will perform. That is like the one guy that I'm really impressed with, too, this, this tournament, the Bard game, uh, and allegedly he barely even plays Bard. Whips that out. It was his played, first professional game. Yeah, plays it fantastically. On Alistair, on Brahm, he can do it all. So, SKT just, whenever they face another opponent, I feel like when I look at the players, they're very rarely are they outmatched in any single matchup. Bengi used to be the only one that you could argue, yeah, better mechanical jungle at the other side. But with Blank, that's kind of solved. Yeah, seems to be the case. Mithy, how do you approach game one in a best of five? Uh, what, well, like with picks and bands and strategy? Uh, I, I mean, I think SKT is just gonna really not sweat it off in the pick and ban. I don't think they have sweated off yet, and I don't think they will be doing it on game one. They have blue side, they're just gonna use their target bans on whatever they feel is annoying or can be annoying for, for Fnatic. Most likely gonna be the Jin as one of, as one of those target bans, and then they're, they're just gonna play their game. They know that if they play their game, they're gonna win, so just ban, don't sweat it. Ban whatever you don't really feel like playing against or anything that is kind of new, and just, just play your game. I like that casual nods from all three of the, the players, former players, yeah, Dexter. And for Fnatic, where are their eyes? I mean, the red side, we know there's OP picks they have to remove. You have to assume Lulu's going to be one of those. You don't want to give that to Faker and SKT, but what else is a consideration? I don't yeah. know. Yeah. <laughs> what do you do as a Fnatic right now? Like, 
you have no information. Like I think uh, SKT has like a lot more information on Fnatic, what they do, what are their strong po points in the game, and where they actually have like weaknesses. And I think it, at SKT's games, if you look at them, it's really hard to just figure out what you have to do in order to beat them. Because I mean, what are you gonna take? Are you gonna just leave up everything and then hope that you can like uh, trade power picks and just hope for the best? I think. Even though Fnatic did that thing yesterday where they're like, okay guys, pick Kalista, we'll take Jin. I don't think you can actually afford to do that against Bang because oh, his Kalista no is absolutely... No the guy's absolutely insane, uh, especially on Kalista because we were talking a little bit about it. Yeah, Jin might have a decent laning phase, but if you play against a smart Kalista player, I don't think it really matters because level 6 Fates Call comes in and you will just get double knocked up by whatever support Wolf ends up playing. So, Kalista ban on, on purple seems very likely. Fnatic, I hope they draft early power spike, uh, mid-game compositions because late game, it just doesn't work for them. I want to see more aggression, more power, just picks, and maybe just put down SKT in a dumpster early and then try to snowball the lead. Yeah, I feel like Fnatic just has to come in with a plan. They they need to. They, it's not like SKT who just doesn't have to sweat it and just play just play their game and it's fine. I think Fnatic has to come in with a plan. What do we want to give them? What do we want to get? What kind of comp do we want to build around? And then just go for it straight up. First rotation. They already have to know what they want to play because if they if they just play good champs against. SKT, it's not going to work. They need, they need a comp. They need, they need things to be working very, very well and well-oiled. All right, so well-oiled composition. Gentlemen, picks and bands are underway. With these three experts by my side, I doubt I will have much to add during the next few minutes. But Jin, Lissandra, Lulu, Nidalee, Krepo, are you surprised by anything yet? I mean, Lulu, target ban, Faker, who plays well with it, works well for SKT. Fnatic also had just good performances with it. That's out of the table. Nidalee is the stronger jungler. Uh, Tempo-wise on this patch, Gragas is making a name for himself, I feel, engage-wise. Um, yep. And then Jin Lissana, yeah. Target bans, these are all target bans of champions that Fnatic have previously done well with, and this is the difference, you know, blue side versus red, four games versus ten so far in this tournament. Yeah, I think the biggest po um, party is probably just Gragas for Spirit, if SKT doesn't first pick it for whatever reason, but there's like so much open stuff right now. I mean, you have all top-tier supports available right now, I mean, what do you ban here last? Kalista. You have to be Kalista. It has to be Kalista, yeah. Otherwise, well, that's... It's so risky. It's too risky, Kalista. yeah. It's a best of five, though, so maybe yep. I can take the risk. I like that. I wouldn't. And they don't. So Kalista banned. Uh, Alistair still up. Braum still up. Lee Sin still up. Uh, when looking at some of the champions that these teams have been successful with. I want to ask Bithy here. Um, with Braum kind of rising in power and people seeming to almost start prioritizing them over Alistair, what's your opinion? Which is the stronger of the two? Um, I think Braum doesn't like gives you the opportunity to win skirmishes a lot, like really hard, but it doesn't really uh, let you and peel very well for your AD. But that's not, doesn't really let you do Force the stuff play. that Alistar can do, which is like. You, usually Alistar I think has a better laning phase than Braum, and also you, with Alistar you can force a play more than, than, than with Braum. You, than with Braum, especially if you're falling slightly behind. Like Braum is just really strong when you're ahead all the game, but the second you need to make a play, force something happen, it's super forced with Braum. Like flash ulting is like so slow and so forced, whereas with Alistar you can like you can make things happen, and that's kind of the difference. Yeah, we did see that a little earlier too, where um, Kai seems slightly more comfortable on the Alistar as opposed to the Braum, so that's why Fnatic picking that up here. The Lee Sin, even though the Gragas is picked, so Fnatic are looking to hide um, as many picks as they can, it seems, and just uh, go for the counter picks. Yeah, I mean, I talked about this like two days ago where I, where I felt that once people really figure out what to ban and pick, if Nidalee is banned, then Gragas, the priority goes up so high, and with everything else being available, it was like a really good first pick here. And now you see the Corki coming in as a flex pick. They don't have to reveal anything yet. They can still go for team fighting. They can still pick a four-man squad with a, like a really good split pushing top laner. And we just have to see what Fnatic is actually going to pick in the next two picks right now. I wonder if they're going to leave the Fiora open. Um, or leave it to go over to uh, Duke then, and what Gamsu would play. Can he actually play the Quinn to the Fiora matchup? I have seen him play Quinn. Actually, I think he has a highlight video somewhere in YouTube about him playing Quinn, but I don't think he is super strong on it. Nothing that, nothing that I don't think Duke has seen. He has played against Smeb, you know, so <laughs> yeah. I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure he, he has an idea of how Quinn works and how he could play. <laughs> I think that's fair to say. Reckless Lux in the Cogmore. That's yep. bold. It's, it's okay, I think uh, now is when you actually have to start showing what you want to go for. He had, to, he had to make a decision, either Kogmo, either Lucian, either Estrel. I don't think he had many more choices. And now it's when Fn uh, Fnatic is already saying that, hey, we're going to have a kite back comp. And S uh, SKT didn't show any hands, so now, now it's when things are starting to show. I'm glad I didn't go for the Zed lock in, though. Yeah, uh, I think Feminine won needs the counter pick here, in my opinion. And also, if you go with Kogmo composition, Zed doesn't really fit in because he. 
doesn't really like team fighting. So he wants to split, and the more you split, and the more you split up, the more eager or the more easy it is, or the easier it becomes sometimes to catch out that Kagwa. To be fair, it also like denies the Fiora pick. I think so as you can talk about this, how you guys pick Trundle into Fiora to specifically counter this, specifically because Trundle has like a lot of better team fighting and can deal with the Fiora split push, right? Mm, not really. I mean. You have better team fight, yes, but you don't really deal with Fiora. Like you, you, you do at some point, but yeah. there's like Fiora is just the same. At, at, as soon as you have three items and you're level 16, nothing can beat you. That's how the champion is designed. And <laughs> as uh, soon as you have three items, and uh, <laughs> that's, that's very easy, it, I think. Yeah. No, it's, it's not easy to get there, right? <laughs> yeah. Like you, it, it's really hard to get level 16 and get three items. It's, but but that's that's exactly when when Fiora becomes really strong and undoable. Yeah, I like the the poppy over the Fiora though. Uh, once the trundle is revealed because the matchup is okay and also just allows Wolf to look for flanks in his fights to just find Reckless. Another hard engage, because kind of Fiora wants to wait until everybody's fighting and be like, okay, my time to shine, enter the fight, pop your ulti. But Poppy is the one that wants to start the fight, wants to just flash E on Reckless. As long as he's fighting the Poppy, he can't really do too much damage to these other targets in the fight. Also, the, the Poppy ultimate is just a really good way of buying time. It's essentially a suppression. Gentlemen, we have one minute before we have to head to the casters. You can see the team comps. It is the Koki Ezreal for SKT. Let's start with the new guys on the desk. Miffy, who will pick up game one of this series? I'm just excited to see uh, Vivian against Faker on set again. I think <laughs> this matchup is going to be fun to watch. And I don't think it's uh, one-sided for any of them. But I think Set could get a solo kill in this matchup. So I, I'm hyped. Going that way. All right, let's go quickly. Uh, team names only. Who will win game one? SKT. SKT? Pressure. SKT, SKT? Yeah, SKT. SKT, there's your predictions, guys. Let's head over to the caster desk to take us into the finals. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. It's the grand final of the Intel Extreme Masters World Championships. Fnatic, they're at it again, but SK Telecom T1 are a mighty power to stop them. Pick and bans went through. You guys predicted pretty much 100% of that pick and ban phase. Yeah, we did a lot better than the desk, I'd like to say. You, you did do better than the desk. And you were like way <laughs> there were a few bands you kind of missed, but that happens. <laughs> I only forget about the bands, not the picks to Fischio. Yeah. That's true. And I like, Lee, how you now united yourself with a European caster. Now we have Fnatic here and then a Korean fanboy. Now that we have SKT here I, I have to be like the middle ground. I'm the little versus barricade that rises <laughs> up. That's me. Uh, I am, uh, the, I middle am the middle ground. ground. There's the owl, owl winking. Wink what a great, what a great job, job the observers, the observers have, done have done this weekend. This weekend. Thank, Thank you very much to those guys on So and Kevin from the EU LCS coming over to help out here. Oh no, there's a pause! There's a pause <laughs> mid the animation! Oh, Kevin, abort, abort, abort! Oh, we want to show everything now. And here we show the players. Let's talk about Team Comms Divisio. Yes. Ooh, yeah. It's a good place to start, I find. We were talking a lot about this set. Potentially yeah. coming in as that last pick when once we saw it was going to be Corky mid lane and Fnatic are going to run 1-3-1 one, one, because also they early picked Trundle and he will of course win that 1v1 against Poppy later on in the game. So you have a strong side lane or two strong side lanes for Fnatic. Issue is that AD carry wave clearing mid is not the strongest for them. Yeah, and I actually would have preferred the earlier Braum pick in this draft because when the Corky and the Ezreal are available, two champions that SK Telecom has put this huge priority on, it's actually just better than Alistair because you're going to be able to draw to block a lot of the poke damage that's coming through. So I think it could have been stronger just a little bit had they gone for that early, that early Braum pickup instead. And then you kind of end up with this awkward Kogma in the mid yeah. lane. You you really can't fight with this team composition if you're Fnatic. There's double exhaust on the side of SK Telecom. They have a lot of ways to get into your back line. Kog'Maw is protected in no way from this, this Gragas or from this Poppy. So it's, uh, it's going to come down probably to uh, the, we were saying, the early game. Yeah, because I don't feel like Fnatic can afford losing the early game here because then you lack wave clear against Ezreal, Corky, disengage of Gragas and Braum. It becomes super difficult for you then to get onto this poke comp from SKT and your towers will just start falling. 
I expect to see a lot of focus from Fnatic on, on keeping Trundle ahead in the early game. If they can snowball that lane, it's really good to gank with the pillar against the poppy here. Try and get Gamsu rolling. Other lanes will do fine on their own. Still, honestly, Illusion will probably fit better for Fnatic. But they yes. pick this AD carry because it is just so, so strong at the moment. And when it's there, you kind of feel like you have to take it. Well, it's one of those picks, though. We really haven't seen it come through for SKT. Now, granted, again, we were not seeing SK Telecom on patch 6.3, so that is a major change, obviously, with the Kog'Ma within those patch notes. Uh, and so perhaps they are a little bit concerned about it, but it certainly has not been a priority for, for SK Telecom. No, and it does make it difficult for Duke and Blank in these late game team fights where you got to get to that AD carry, but Triple frontline with the Braum shield as well to block Reckless's damage is going to be super impactful for SKT. So I definitely favor their team fighting. It's just a 1-3-1 one, one for Fnatic. The split pushing, that's how they're going to win. How aggressive is Wolf I being mean, here on Spirit? My god, he's causing him some serious problems. He's going to have to force him to back away. He should be able to lifesteal that. That has been changed a bit, so that's going to slow him in the jungle a bit. He should be okay, though. Gamsu's alongside him to hold his hand. The two Koreans up against the former Korean team, of course. They've played across in over in Korea many years ago. Two of the best performing players this yeah, tournament. Definitely. Uh, two players struggling before this tournament even started, but they have really showed up Gamsu on some of these tanks. Now also the Trundle pick. Almost had all his games being fantastic. The, yeah. the, especially the Chaogu to, to, uh, Chao Gu match, if I can get my words out. It's a, it's a tricky language. I'm glad you learned it, Deficio, but uh, it's improved, Still learning. It's improved Still a learning. lot over the years. But it, it's definitely been those two, those pair, pairing that grouped together, literally picked up Fnatic during the Chao Gu phase. But here we see the lane swaps, and Fnatic are going to be ahead, it seems. Yeah, they are quite far ahead, at least a half the turret gone down before SK Telecom started hitting it. And Reckless is also able to really take down these towers fast with that extra attack speed he's going to get. And just a small little detail from Fnatic, if you guys notice how they're actually standing here at the tower. You want to position yourself between the two minion waves, because you want the enemy minions to actually hit you. And then your minions will just die to tower so they can actually survive for longer. And you only want to use abilities to hit the enemy minions, because you want to always auto-attack the tower to take it down as fast as possible. A little bit of a delay here. and. Well, coming into this tournament, just to talk about Fnatic a little bit, I mean, when I was doing my reviews and what we were saying is that I just felt like they were misusing the players that they had, that they weren't playing the right kind of compositions for the style that uh, they should be going for after the addition of particularly Spirit, but also to a lesser degree, Gamsu. And they showed up. It really looks like they switched things up. The, the trust in Spirit appears to be much more there, and he's had some wonderful lease in games so far. And this is what I hope to see out of Spirit. I mean, they got him for a reason. He was absolutely amazing in China last year on a bottom tier team. So we know he has it in him. We've seen him how great he was on Samsung Blue back in the day. And it's nice to see him open up as a playmaker over the course of this IEM tournament. And also just set up a guy like Febivin to play aggressive in the laning yep. phase. Give him picks like Zed, LeBlanc, where he can really be a bully because he is a fantastic mid laner, but he was held back with some of these slow scaling picks he was using in the EU LCS and honestly didn't have much of an impact until again, the new picks and this almost new fanatic here at IEM. And you say that, that's, that's an interesting time. I mean, obviously, any team that makes such drastic changes as Fnatic had to with, obviously, Huni and Rainova going over to North America, uh, when they have to make such drastic changes, it, it takes time to gel, but it's took them longer than you would expect in the LCS. Yeah, Daylor often talks about how his way of coaching is he will have the basics, and then he will try and teach them things from there, like evolve it from there. If it doesn't work, you go back to basics, and you just keep going back to zero, and then you build them on top of it again and again and again. I think they tried some things uh, in the pick and ban phase that definitely didn't fit the team. As you said also, Monty, like these very slow scaling late game comps instead of using Spirit and Febivan as, as aggressive players. And that's been the big change that really worked for this team. Lane drop plays out. Uh, a little adaptation for SKT calling in the jungler to match the clear speed or the tower killing speed of Fnatic here on top side. Fnatic will normally go Rift Held now. Give that on to Rectus, but they can't because actually SKT evened out the time and now you just have to recall and go back to bottom lane. Yeah, this is by the adaption that uh, we didn't see from RNG. This is exactly what we were, you were talking about in the time for Bivin. Exhausted, going deep on the turret. Won't get him down with the Ignite. Faker should be able to get away from that one for Bivin, of course. Goes back to his shadow and lives. But SK Telecom 
course, they took that bottom turret, which immediately leads into Dragon. Yeah, and also by calling in the jungler there, they buy themselves just a few more seconds before the lane swap can occur. Because they got the tower first, they open themselves up for that dragon. We don't actually see a Rift Herald play as Spirit just continues to farm further through the jungle. And that's again simply because SKT calls in jungler, kills tower first. Fnatic realize if they go to Rift Herald now, they're going to be way too behind in the play. And they won't actually be able to make this tier 2 push they normally would when they're ahead in the play. So therefore they decide to just recall. Gamzo picks up some farm. SKT gets a dragon. It is annoying, but it's by no means the end of the world. It's just first dragon. The stats doesn't mean that much early on. And now we're just very even after the swap. Something, Look at the farm between eight Something to keep your eye on as the game develops, of course. We are only seven minutes in. Already seen a... Quicker pace, even with the lane swaps, everybody doing it by the numbers so far. Oh, SKT, though, are, are selling their top laner here. They didn't bounce the wave on the tower. That was the mistake they made because they wanted to rush into Dragon. The problem is you didn't have a, basically a dead lane for SKT that can be frozen by Fnatic. And that's why Reckless is just sitting there picking up farm. Meanwhile, there's going to be a wave pushing top that Trundle should go and catch. See what happens mid, though. Nothing so far. Trundle should actually go top here and catch the wave Ezreal is pushing in. Unless he can keep freezing this wave on, on the bottom side, because then he can keep denying Duke. That's the number one objective. Deny Duke any farm. It's a nice early aggression here. This is what you were talking about. Getting Duke out of position. Spirit slammed against the wall. Nicely played by Duke. He should be able to just flash over the wall. He's not going to get followed by Spirit. So nice escape from him. And now, of course, that's putting pressure in this top lane. But Reckless is here. And this is going to be dangerous for SKT to push on to. Wolf just trying to keep Reckless away from him while... They deal the damage. I mean, they're not going to be able to get a great deal on the tower here. TP is up for Duke here, and there are only two people underneath this turret, and also Faker has the mid lane pushed. So see what Duke decides to do. They are just going to shove them off the turret. Here we go! Going to go on towards it. An unfortunate ah. barrel there, forcing the support straight back into his base. Teleport was coming down. It cancelled straight away, and that's going to be fanatic to react to this one. Easy stuff now. They just had to wait for the TP to come in, and I think you, you make that play. Also, a little bit of a delay onto the barrel there. Oh, yes. I'm happy you say it. We now hate Blank's Gragas. <laughs> that auto attack does absolutely nothing. Just body slam ulti, and Cly is dead. You kill him with the TP coming in, 4v1. Nothing he can do. Put in the auto attack, you give Cly a chance to flash away, and that's why he survives. Oh, Spirit comes in. Wolf going to get thrown to the wolves, and he is going to go down from this one. No! Flash away! Brilliant stuff! The support from Blank and Bang. Force Fnatic away on Wolf Lips. Duke is still uh, struggling down this bottom lane. Really far behind in farm. And again, this is because SKT put so much value on pushing out the lane and getting Dragon. You will then always swap your AD carry top to push out that lane. And then suddenly your top lane has nowhere to farm. Let's see the play again though. Spirit kicks back Wolf. Knocks him off, knocks him further back. And then you're going to see SKT moving close enough they that you can actually themselves. jump to them. They completely caught themselves out. That one little pulverize, they all basically ran for it. Nobody predicting the change of pace. For Biven, meanwhile, struggling in this mid lane. Faker definitely got the better of him so far. Package as well. Phosphorus bomb catching on. Ooh. Let's see if Faker fancies this one. For Biven has got Ignite, remember. Well, Faker's job here is just to clear the wave against the Zed and start chipping away the tower. They have this big advantage in the, in the mid lane now. Uh, Fevvin tried that early all in, but Faker has just been poking and bullying him out of this position. And now he doesn't have that same farm. Faker just stepping aside on some of these Razor Shurikens coming in. And ever so slowly, this tower, especially with the Sheen, is going to go down. And Fevvin's really going to need some help to prevent Faker just from working his way through the mid lane turret. Just good use of blue buff as well for Faker. Playing aggressive, has a ward on the bottom side. He can always hover around bottom side and there's some assistance. Bottom lane though, we have a potential gank from SKT while the rest of Fnatic are taking Rift Hail here and it's all oh. in mid. Forbidden goes all in, but the exhaust comes out. Is it going to be dead. enough? It is! First blood goes to Forbidden. It's going to be immediately countered by an ulti from Blank. <laughs> That's literally a drive-by. And now, well, Gamsu did manage to get out alive down that bottom lane. They were kind of positioning for it, but Forbiven on the Zed gets in on Faker. And that's, uh, it's so fun to watch Forbiven play Zed because he knows the limits of the champion so well. And when he can do that, doesn't 
Put up to with Faker's Bully and Spirit's here. He knows Blank's ult is down. He sends Wolf back in, but is that the mistake? Spirit's gonna eat the yes, second exhaust, but look at Reckless. He's hammering the damage down onto Wolf. It's gonna be a kill for kill exchange, but can he get the double off Blank? I'm not sure he's got enough to slow it down. Bank's gonna be able to just flash away from Gamsu. Meanwhile, this is happening. Blank does get away, and it's a one for one trade in the end. Let's see the all-in again. So he's staying so far back. Faker just wants to push out here and then potentially recall, but all-in. Ignite and everything. Actually misses his Q, but it gets the auto attack and then jumps back and it's enough damage. But the real critical thing was Febivan flashing the point-blank rocket right there, because as soon as he does that, there's not enough damage to finish him off. Even... Oh, well, he gets a one for one. But actually an assist by SKT. And then this fight here, no flash from Wolves, was used earlier. And also you have Gamsu down on the bottom side here trying to pull away the Ezreal. Ends up being a one for one again though for SKT and they are slightly ahead in gold because Faker is so far ahead in farm in this mid lane. Clearly both teams looking to make some plays. Keep your eye on Reckless as well. Use this flash in that engaged and heal. So that is going to be timed by SKT. We'll see where they try and make use of it as the dragon spawns. And comes down. Of course, SKT picked up the first one. Fnatic in position, but SKT will fancy challenging this and immediately Fnatic back away. And while we had that big fight going on, Gamsu was chasing Bang, as you guys saw. Duke was just farming. He's actually caught up in farm almost now, even in level, so slightly ahead at this point. Yep, and has TP. Game. Fnatic doesn't want to fight this one. They don't have a teleport, so I like this does. play. Spirit wants to fight. Oh, he actually already used his ulti kick. That was a nice counter from Duke there. Already got the slam down, and Gamsu unable to catch up on this. Maybe had to get the pole down. He does. Manages to get the slow. Duke is going to try and turn it around. He tried to hammer oh, one away. He might get the kill on Spirit. It could be a 1 for 1 and 2v1. No, he survives. He will get the kill, but again, it's the second dragon for SKT. It's just the objective trades right there. You could take that kill. Certainly does help out, but it goes over onto Spirit. Um, so we'll get some time to farm, but the Dragon stack starting to get up there. I mean, we've got two Dragons now for SKT and 12 minutes into this game. The fifth stack is going to become a very real threat. Still the only play Fnatic could make because there was no TP for Gamsu, so you can't really fight Dragon. Go uh -huh. top instead, just pick up a kill. Unless you're RNG and you randomly leave lane and just run all the way to Dragon. And Reckless! No flash, remember. Reckless caught out. Gonna get himself pulled down. The question is, have they got enough to finish him off? Bang gets hammered away from this one, and that's gonna turn back on his head. Spirit fans, oh! the kick. Beautiful stuff as he gets onto Blank. Now, can he follow it through? Bang's gonna be the next focused target. Wolf could be the squishy one. Meanwhile, down Pop the river, here. the Bivens coming, Faker's coming, everybody's coming, but Spirit gets across to the side. Spirit's gone off towards Faker. Faker uses the exhaust on Spirit, which means for Bivens let loose, and he's gonna get himself the ulti down. Is it enough to take down Faker? I don't think it will. For Bivin gets hammered to the wall by Duke, and it's a good counter play from SKT. A two for two trade in the end, I believe. Oh, they try and get greedy onto this Kog'Maw, but you have to remember, this is a cull tier Ezreal at this point in the game. I really think they're trying to force this. And as for the Dragon play earlier, Bang was close to his tier two, and again, cull tier does, would have made it hard, I think, to fight that Dragon at this juncture. Let's take a look at this replay again. They catch Reckless. And then just coming in protection from Cly and Spirit with the shield, and then this AD carry gets unleashed just standing there, and now we just gotta look at the TP coming. We're not gonna look at it because there's another fight. Because Gamsu's caught in the middle, Cly's gonna try and react, but he's simply gonna be the sacrificial cow as he will drop down. A couple of ultis used to make sure he will eventually fall, trust me. And it's Duke that will pick it up. Oh, and you're getting fanatic here. They always wanna help each other. It's something they've done in every game this tournament, and sometimes they end up getting caught out. Spirit now, walking very aggressive, nothing happens, but Cly here trying to save the day, he ends up going down. That fight before where Fnatic had some good outplays at first, picked up two kills and then trying to help. Spirit escaping ends up meaning Fibon also goes down. Mid tower is open though. No wave clear so far except for ulti from blank. Easy to clear that out. Uh, still waiting on Bang's True Shot Barrage. They do get some of that damage down. At the very least, this Trundle in the mid lane is a bit odd, but they are going to swap him back up now that his teleport is no longer on cooldown. Meanwhile, Faker going to start split pushing down in the bottom side, at least for a moment. Looks like it will be Ezreal's job to clear the wave. Has a sheen, but no Iceborne Gauntlet quite yet. And Faker still at the point where with Exhaust, he can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe against the Zed. Once we get a fully completed second item, though, for Febivan, it becomes 
fairly difficult for Faker, and especially once you hit level 16 on this Z here, you get the rank 3 ulti, you can destroy these AD carries completely. Until the QSS is coming. And then QSS arrives, <laughs> and you're kind of like, oh, well, guess I'm not going to kill you. You can still deal, deal a lot of damage. You just have to jump back to the shadow instead of one-shotting the AD carry. And that's where it come, becomes so difficult to play Z. Well, we talked about this. Fnatic was going to have to probably get ahead in this early game if they really wanted to enact their strategy of a three-lane split push. Uh, they've been staying even, but they haven't had that lead that they really need to blow this game wide open just yet when they have stayed you know, even at objectives, but still behind in terms of the dragon count. And that is really something that's going to be ticking here for SKT. The third dragon will be up in just a couple of minutes. Look at the map now, though. Faker just went top lane despite seeing Zed pushing in bottom lane. He's obviously not running with any teleports or anything, so it means Fnatic can apply some pressure on the tower. Won't be able to do a whole lot because Faker had the Rift Hell buff. Quick recall, return back to lane, and therefore everything kind of resets once more here. Dragons will be a big one for SKT, but we have to remember, Fnatic just need to make one play, technically, take that dragon and you stop the five dragons from rolling. It just becomes so hard to do, and one mistake will then completely lose you the game. Well, and especially because uh, Ezreal is starting to come online here, and they have to, if they get into a situation where they don't make a pick, where they don't intercept somebody before the dragon, five manning that dragon is going to be a real challenge for Fnatic. They want to avoid these 5v5 engagements. And it's just such a good Rift Hill timing from SKT before. Seeing, okay, only Zed is pushing our other side lane, the top lane is not being pushed out at all. So there's no real pressure on the map. Take Rift Held, clear out top for Faker, recall, defend bot, and then Fnatic is pushed really far back on the map and no lane is set up to apply pressure. Then you can group as your siege comp. And that's the main thing for SKT, just group, 80 carries together, jungle support to back them up, and then tower is down. There's no proper wave flip from Fnatic to defend against it. You need to have these side lanes always pushed in together or the grouping will happen. The large distance of farm, of course, it's starting to build ever so strong between Fake and Forbidden. Forbidden off down the bottom lane. I think we're going to be seeing quite a bit of 1-3-1 coming out from Fnatic. Meanwhile, we'll see as this game slows down a little bit. Yeah. It's, it's moved out of that chaotic lane phase transition. Now, SKT, like you said, with that Rift held, a little bit of control for him. 30 seconds until this dragon spawns, and you can see Fnatic all backed. They're all coming back in with their items. A lot of pink wards on them, as well as Fnatic. Everybody wants to try and get control of this river now. Kind of poor timing for Fnatic, though. The reason they're recalling is because they want to be ready to fight for Dragon. But you're fighting into this team fighting comp. It's definitely not what you're looking for. And it's going to be super difficult now to get control of this Dragon Pit. So SKT is setting up prime position here, honestly, to take another Dragon or a very good fight for SKT. If they take this one, they will be on track for about a 30-minute fifth Dragon, which is something that should be unnerving for Fnatic. And SK Telecom just playing this by the books. They're pushing up the side lanes, making sure they have the pressure advantage before they start this dragon, finding what poke they can to discourage any kind of team fight. All TP's up in this game. But it shouldn't be Fnatic's goal to come in here unless they can really take uh, something out, but they're just going to try and take mid turret yeah. instead. Definitely the right call for Fnatic at this point. Double pink ward in the river for SKT, so there's like zero vision around this dragon. The problem is it goes down so quickly against five members or four members. And, and they can't even touch the middle turret. Fnatic's on the back foot. KT completely. were too quick on that. Caught them again, off guard, yeah. We mentioned how if Fnatic starts falling behind in the early game, you don't have that split pushing threat all of a sudden. And then it's too easy for SKT to just push out a lane, group as four, and start death balling through the mid lane. When's the death ball going to start? Right now. <laughs> Run mid. Ah, then wolf recalls. <laughs> Soon. Pause. So not soon. Not so soon. <laughs> soon enough, it would appear. Couldn't predict the pause. Ah, uh, Clyde's client crashed by the looks of it. You can see it on your screen there. Is Playing some Minesweeper? something, yeah. Hold on, guys. Oh, no, he's just okay. alt-tabbed. Tell a lie. Maybe looking at something. Speaking of Clyde, by the way, first international tournament, alongside, obviously, Blank on the SKT. First international tournament, made it to the final. Just came out of, what, solo queue, queue three weeks ago? Yeah, Joined pretty Fnatic. much. Pretty much. It played a little, some of their smaller tournaments around, like Nordic Open, and that's basically been it for this guy, but he's been playing a lot of solo queue with Reckless before. Both are from Sweden. They know each other really well. 
And as things weren't clicking with Noxiac, Fnatic said, you know what, this is not something we, we want to invest more time into. We want to make a change. And they picked him up, and the main reason at first was better synergy and also bigger potential, probably. I mean, we definitely see some very good plays from him this tournament, but it has been wildly inconsistent, even within the yes. course of a single game. Mm. Uh, still definitely learning the limits, learning how to play at the professional level in these team fights, and knowing what he has to do. Because sometimes you see those flash bra multis, and you kind of wonder what he's up to. And other times you see those great thresh plays where he's hitting all his hooks and uh, initiating fights so smoothly, and he looks very, very good. He is hit or miss, but he's really showing that the pressure of playing on stage against a team like SKT or RNG in the last match here, it doesn't really get to him. That's great. Because yeah. he will make that mistake, and other players will just tilt completely. It's like, oh, I'm done here. Like, I just made a super poor play. I'm going to play super passive from now on. It happens to a lot of players. He's just going in, and he's making the next big play. Or he's trying again, and again, and again, and again. And he's been having good games most of the time. On the flip side, of course, Blank is having a magnificent tournament in terms of KDA. He hasn't really been tested so far. Uh, he is playing Gragas in this one. Um, it's a champion that can make you uh, the enemy of your own team if you uh, <laughs> were to throw one of those mis miscued ultis. Uh, but uh, so far, he has played magnificently well, and he's, he's kind of been the bully once again. We saw it in the semifinals up against TSM, pretty much in Sven Skeren's face for the vast majority uh, of the jungle phase throughout the first and second game. So Blank, obviously coming into this one, what, had, what, four games competitively with SKT in the, over yeah. in Korea? Only won one of them, so it was so immediately there was question marks. Yeah, and it, it, he did have experience at the LPL last year. He was a sub mm. for, for Royal, or, uh, and he was a, a sub for Royal for Insect. Horn, yeah. And uh, that, so he got a few games when Insect was injured, when he broke his leg. He was, he was okay, but it wasn't anything spectacular. And uh, to talk about Cly, you know, he came in, Cly just won a series against Mata, obviously, <laughs> uh, probably one of, his, uh, from one of his support idols. And coming in here, Blank is probably taking a look at Spirit, one of these season four jungle gods from Samsung Blue. And he's, he's not batting an eye. He's playing his own game and doing quite well. Apparently blowing into his microphone. That sounds like communication. I think Reckless is like, no, you need to move it closer. Talk and into actually, the microphone. Your microphone is not directed. We talked about Synergy, boys. <laughs> there it is on your screens. Okay. All right. Can you hear me? Can was, you hear was me? The, was the angle wrong? Yeah, it, he's not actually got the mic <laughs> in his mouth. It was like pointing the wrong way. But, uh, oh, the little, little beautiful partnership. For oh, Bivin, that's totally camera. entertained. <laughs> He's just pondering what he's going to do. He's like, like he's, uh, he's an evil rookies, villain. Yeah, he's like, rookies not knowing how to direct, point the mics in the right direction. Uh, how am I going to kill Fager next? <laughs> yeah. What is my evil master plan? This guy right there got solo killed once again. Yeah. Fit Piven, man. He it's has Fager's number. Well, With Zed. With Zed. <laughs> <laughs> Zed are cocky. I mean... You only need to look at the first game of the TSM series. It was like, oh, wow, okay, they've got Faker's number. No, 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 <laughs> no. Faker hasn't arrived yet. He's right, they're really, ready again. Nearly warming up, and suddenly he managed to pick up a bunch of kills. But here we go, we're back in the game. It is the first in a best of five series. Fnatic up against SK Telecom. T1, who are chasing the best win rate in the world right now. Yeah, they've, they've been absolutely massive. This new SK Telecom team, ever since KNS merged, uh, having a 75% or so win rate in, over the last year, more than a year now, it's, uh, it's pretty impressive, considering to uh, keep up a win rate that high for that long. For the number of international competitions you go in, it's, it's really incredible. Uh, truly proving why they were world champions and dominant world champions at that. But of course, there has been changes. And we'll see how this new shape, SKT, some would say improved, but their LCK record so far, not proving the case in point. They are definitely better than their ranking in the LCK at the moment, though. Is that what you tell yourself to sleep at night, Martin? Every night. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh man, at SKT is way better than this. <laughs> with Blank, I, I think Benki really struggled. It hurt no, SKT I, quite I, a lot. I agree with you. <laughs> 
I definitely agree with you. So those Udyr games against Longjiu were rather painful, and SK Telecom, they bounced back. They Remember, they lost their last two best of three, including one to one of the bottom three teams in the league, oh, that was Afrika painful to Freaks, watch. and they played, they played quite poorly in that series. Now, let's see the map here again. We talk about how Fnatic wants to have these side lanes push in, but you can see every single time they're going in to push one of the lanes, the other one is already pushed back. And that means you never get to set up this 1-3-1 one, one setup, and your entire composition kind of falls apart, and you rely on a bit of a random team fight where you catch out someone, but SKT is not going to give you those team fights. They're just going to play fairly slow pace. They can wait for five dragons potentially at this point, and just keep always pushing out one lane. You can see Poppy on your... On your minimap here, he's pushed up bot lane. That means the Trundle is not really a threat on top side. Poppy's just going to recall and go catch that wave, and you have TP versus TP, and now Zed is on the defensive. And also, they have deep wards in both sides of the jungle, so the pushing very, very safe from SKT at the present time, and I just think they're going to play around this, these five dragons. There's yeah. no reason for them to do anything else right now. They can simply wave clear in mid, keep that turret up, keep the pressure on so that they can have the advantage at every single dragon fight hereafter and force Fnatic to fight them on their own terms. And really one of the main problems with Fnatic, and it's something I've noticed in some of the other games they play when they have this split push, they tend to kind of recall one by one by one. So whenever they actually do start pushing one lane, well, the other guy recalls. And then it breaks the entire 1-3-1. One, one. If you're not holding hands pushing together, you don't really gain anything. And it just makes it very easy for SKT to always push it back. But at this point, it is also super difficult. It's, it's why Fnatic had to win that early game, to really set up Zed to be a, a threat. He's kind of been nullified outside of the one solo kill. And the third items are, are going to be important here, uh, with that QSS possibly coming through after the Infinity Edge, particularly for Faker. But they still have the double exhaust, too, and getting through that in a team fight is, will be challenging, to say the least. Spirit is going to have to be on point if he's going to try and land one of these flying kicks on Bang or Faker during the team fight because they have done a great job of picking him out so far, but look at that! Into the tower as if by magic called into action for Biven round the back. Thank ah, you very solo much. Kill. That's an easy kill. 2-0 <laughs> <laughs> for Febivan. <laughs> I might Just need to check my up. mic. Can Spirit hear me right now? I mean, he literally on cue is like, he's going to have to thread the needle and just comes popping out the side. He's and this is, this is only the kind of bench you have to make and like yeah. massive outplays to do anything as Fnatic. Let's see if they can get a mid tower. Let's see, the, the Gragas ultimate is not available. We'll make it quite hard to defend this. There we go. Oh, there's the pulverize. There's the headbutt. Wolf caught out. Duke now coming around the back there. But has the damage been done too early? Reckless is going to get picked off. Hammer down. Does finally drop. Captain Surprise might pick up Blank here. Will it be enough? Yes, it will. Reckless gets the kill. And Duke is just being beaten by a baseball bat wielding Trundle. He will back away, but that's going to be the mid turn. Absolutely huge plays there from Fnatic. They translated that one pick so well into another objective. Diving underneath the turret, we saw another great ult there from Febivin. And to set this up, let's take a look at the pick onto Faker. Oh, this is why Spirit is such a good Lee Sim play. He's setting up these picks. He has the confidence now. Faker gets into the tower, doesn't die just yet. But then, of course, Febivin showing up, challenging Faker, winning it. Get that one kill. I mean, what an outplay right there. And then we just see Fnatic chasing up, and I think he actually, SKT kind of underestimates the damage Reckless can do when they re-engage, because they're obviously looking at Fnatic saying, oh, you're fairly low, low mana on your AD carry, you're pushing out tower, and Spirit is top lane right now, so it's a 4v4. But then look at the damage Reckless can do when the fight breaks out, and then also the Zed diving in on Bang, enough then for Fnatic to get all these tanks low, and then the passive from Reckless can finish it up together with Febivan taking out Bang. Yeah, big, big trade there, 4 for 1. And with that, we do see Fnatic. Oh, and that's the Dragon as well. Yeah, well, they're on it right now, and no one else there. Poppy with no TP, and they're going to give it up. So Fnatic finds a way to stall out this game just a little bit longer. It won't be such an easy five dragon take here from SK Telecom. They get everything they need. So after that pause, where apparently the microphone was fixed for Cly, <laughs> Fnatic just went completely nuts. I mean, it was looking pretty rough in terms of how they could actually play the game here. And then suddenly, big plays in the mid lane. Dragon now, you break that one, you get 6% yourself. Reckless is on three items. I like the Sterics here because there's very little backline threat from SKT. It's two tanks diving him, and you can't kill a now Bruiser AD carry. 
So suddenly, Rex is just going to stand there and melt these tanks. Spirits on the hunt, but unfortunately there was a ward down from Duke to spot out the flank, and he does manage to catch him out. So, okay, Fnatic, what is your next play? Got themselves ahead in kills. Still just edging it in gold is SKT, but that's only down to the fact they got that rift held early on, of course. But Duke hammers for Biv and has to cleanse it straight off. Didn't fancy that one. Duke had been sitting in that tri for quite a while before Spirit decided to come up. But well, Biven expecting him to back away, but just couldn't uh, solo him. This this is the this is what they want here. Uh, they have the QSS already under Duke. He's been running this uh, Iceborne Sunfire QSS build today, and that means that he's going to be the designated split pusher into Febovin. There's not really anything Febovin is going to be able to do to kill him at this juncture, so he has all the items he needs. Uh, Fnatic is going to switch Febuin away from Duke at any time possible, keep the two teleporters against each other. Obviously, both of them are physical damage dealers, which is why this armor build is so good, both against Trundle and the Zed. In this case, so move Febuin away from the Poppy, and he can still push in a lane and try and take down Faker another time. Faker is building towards QSS now. And then we might just see Fnatic try and opt into, honestly, more fights if they can catch up one of these squishies and just have Rectus standing there, destroying everyone who comes close to him. That's how Fnatic can start try and win these fights. But Rectus has to stay alive. Yeah, and he was actually stood pretty deep in the mid lane there when he was getting surrounded. That's what SKT was setting up for. But we saw Blank just having a little edge in there. A quick flash ulti would have certainly sent him straight into the loving arms of Faker. Would have quite happily received him as it is. The four man fanatic. Little death ball. Not quite a death ball right yet, but Duke fancies it against Gamsu. Baseball bat versus hammer. I'm not really sure which comes out on top in that duel, but. Probably a hammer. It was <laughs> probably a hammer. Yeah, I think, I think a hammer. Depends on the size of the hammer. I mean, it's really. a pretty true. big hammer. Yeah, it's like a war hammer. If it's like a war hammer, yeah. If it's a carpentry yeah. hammer, no. <laughs> I, I take the baseball bat at that duel. Well, we'll find out one day. A YouTube test on that one. I, I don't think I'm that sure sounds, there's probably you. That, that sounds one. absolutely <laughs> awful to watch. <laughs> <laughs> don't do this at home anymore. <laughs> well, as it is, Fnatic, you know what? We're approaching the 30 minute mark here, guys. And we, we were saying it, obviously, on the desk, they were saying, you know, if, if it were to get to 30 minutes and you see Fnatic still in the game, everybody's absolutely delighted. QSS picked up by Forbiven. Okay. Delighted. But the QSS, except what is it like? Obviously, oh, he wants to be able to dive into these fights and not it, getting... Well, I mean, it's, not get bronze. Yeah. yeah, it must be for the exhaust, but there's there's a couple of them there's there. two of them, yeah, just exhaust him again. <laughs> so, a little bit of an interesting choice. Meanwhile, QSS finished on to Corky. So the number of targets are, are dwindling rather rapidly. Uh oh, here we go. Teleport flank coming in. Gamsu going to try and get around the side. Bang is actually in a tricky position. He's going to get focused on, but he immediately manages to get away with it. But no, he gets slid straight into Gamsu. Fake around the side. He's putting damage down. He's got a good defensive front line. Meanwhile, Duke and Rectus are going at it around the back, but Forbidden's getting involved. But this is turning heavily in the favor of SKT. Duke is putting down a lot of punishment on towards Fnatic. Spirit should get dropped and will get dropped. And Faker, who was just at the background, pummeling away, caught them off. It was a two-for-one trade in the end. But Fnatic, they put everything into it. They had almost the perfect flank, and it didn't work. A spirit has been so good at finding carries in these team fights. He kicks Bang out almost instantaneously so they can get that kill. They know he's really the only viable target. Bang didn't use his flash in that fight, but Duke is just so huge right now that he was able to take Febvin and Reckless entirely out of that engagement. And I'm very happy Reckless is getting lifesteal now because that's probably what he's missing in this fight once we see it again. Also, Bang didn't go QSS third item, so he is still a target for the Z. But let's see what happens in the back line here where Reckless gets taken down by Duke. Knocked into the wall, so small misposition from Reckless. And because he has no lifesteal, He's actually not able to really tank through what Duke can do to him, and a second knock into the wall. Beautiful play from Duke. He's super strong on this poppy here. I think his ulti actually caught for Piven as well as yeah, it hit both well. of them. He caught, so it's just taking knock up. both carries out of the fight. Very well played from Duke. Once we get the blade of the Ruin King for Reckless, though, it's going to be a different story. And if he can just position away from these walls here, the fact that Duke got to knock him into. <laughs> 
was twice. Obviously makes it very difficult for Reckless to, to kill him in time. It's always so easy to say. Just just avoid the I mean, that's just, why we just become just casters, right? Don't go near them. Well, oh, ooh, ulti catches on it. Beautiful stuff. Bang quickly. Catches in there and now Spirit in trouble. And well, we've seen this before, haven't we, ladies and gentlemen? SKT, once they just get a little sniff of danger, they will absolutely grasp onto it. And Fnatic, now, what are they going to do? They've got no jungler. There's no support. They could go Baron. It's, it's still a risky Baron, but Fnatic are very much undermanned right now. Well, that was actually... Cly had just a couple seconds left on his yeah. ultimate, and they sensed that, picked him off just moments before that Unbreakable Will came off cooldown, and now SKT just going to go for the Baron. They'll take it. Fnatic will respond with a Dragon to even it up just a little bit. But it's it's going to be hard to defend this push now for, for Fnatic, considering their composition and all of the poke that SK Telecom has. And it's just one small mistake, and SKT will punish you. Same thing in the semi-final against Team Solo Med. Fairly even for a good 20 minutes. And then one mistake from Team Solo Med, instant punish from SKT. Fnatic, we're now 32 minutes in, but this again, Cly playing a ward when he has no backup at all from his team, because two members here is definitely not enough. You can see Trundle and Zed on your minimap is not even close. So you have no business going out playing a pink ward at this point. And then you get caught out. Bluebill Ezreal will always chase you. And again, one mistake. Two kills, Baron, and suddenly the game looks almost impossible to win. Well, I'm sure Mithy, who's on the desk, won't appreciate me uh, reminding them that one simple mistake, sadly, it was amazing, getting caught out, cost them the game, and knocked them out of the tournament. That was very much theirs to win up against uh, TSM. But no, it wasn't the case. And that's just the danger when you start getting later in the game. Just a little catch can cause some serious problems. Oh, interesting, okay. Kick from Spirit did land on Faker there, chose not to follow through. Doesn't have Flash available just yet. Lands it again on Blank, just waiting. Yeah, he had the ward down there. He's like, I could maybe maneuver onto this. But without a Flash, he didn't fancy going for that engage. It would be a risky engage, of course. Don't forget, it's a barreled up SKT. And Duke, he's really the major problem right now. 6-1-0. He's been landing his stuns perfectly, slamming people into wall time and time again. And now SKT just continues to siege this down. Well, the thing about Duke is, remember when Duke first came to IEM two years ago? He was playing with the KT Bullets under the name Leopard. We're gonna get out that second fight's gonna start. Instant cleanse, instant flash. Faker out of it. There's gonna be a good four-man pulverize from Cly. Is it gonna be enough? I don't think so. Reckless in there, they're gonna ignore Cly. He's just gonna back out. Ultimate not even gonna keep him alive. Now Reckless is gonna get pursued. Blank diving in there. But it all started off on Faker, and his reactions were on point. And QSS has so much value for SKT here. When you get kicked yep. back by Lee Sin, you can QS the mid-air. And as long as you have a flash to use the right after, you can instant then flash back, and you won't get knocked into an enemy team. Also blocks the Zed, obviously. Fizz ulti. And we've hit that late game point Fnatic didn't want to get to. So, two inhibitors picked up for the price of a flash kick engage. They could have tried to sit and siege it out, but I think they realized it was probably a losing battle. They had to try something. They've got to that do or die phase, and well, sadly, it looks like it may well be die for game one here for Fnatic. What do they do? What are they, what are they going to adjust coming into this game two? Because they, they did well in lane phase. They, they matched them with aggression. They matched them with the, the lane trades. It, it was okay at the start. It's just the mid game kind of started to drift away. Well, unfortunately, just going even is actually a win for SK Telecom. Yeah. <laughs> Under these conditions with these team compositions, I do think that Fnatic played well, and they started to look like maybe they would have a, a, a glimmer of hope at a comeback when they got that kill onto Faker and picked up several more as they charged down the mid lane, but they just needed more of an advantage. SKT bought so much time with their item builds and with stalling out this game, with playing around the Dragon, and that meant that they eventually got to these items like the QSS that were absolutely huge. Take a look at this one again. There's Faker, instant cleanse, flash, very easy to get away from that. And then Spirit is stunned up there in the back line. And then very little you can do here because Reckless getting blocked by Braum. Braum is such a good pick into these AD carries. And both have been having a lot of impact. And I think it's been one of those super, super S tier picks for SKT because they're so good at picking targets. And when you connect that Braum Q and just get the passive, it's so much easier for SKT to think catch you out and basically force you into a bad situation where you have to potentially re-engage or you just end up dying or having to blow a flash and then you don't have it for the next fight. And Faker, 
is uh, I was about to say going ham, but not really. No, I just thought it ju joined Duke. Simply flanking around the side, two pushing in, Duke keeping those super minions in towards the Nexus turrets. It's not a great deal Fnatic can do about this. They're pretty much spectators and just trying to keep the minions at bay as SKT slowly start knocking on the door. No Baron buff required anymore for them. Dragon will be up in one minute, but that's simply a, a null starter. There's going to be the kick. That's going to launch Spirit out of the fight. Clyde's going to pop his ulti, but look, they can even just work through that now. That's not really helping him. Oh, oh the snipe comes out from Bang. Picks off Reckless. Clyde's going to go down. His ultimate's already walked its way down. Spirit slammed against the turret as if just to rub salt into the wounds. We can even hit you into your own Nexus turrets. It's going to be SKT that will take game one. They are definitely favorites in this tournament. Have been since the start, but they are proving it as Blank chugs down the water. Another great <laughs> performance from him. Three, two, and one. You've got plenty Jeez. of time in between games, buddy. Just take your time. You'll get cramp if you drink it too fast. I like this game, though. It was a good game. Um, definitely enjoyed the early game. I think Fnatic will we'll talk about this, you know, now with Daylor, how they had a good start, and when they actually had a, a moment to kind of deny Duke a lot of farm, they got kind of pulled into a few fights where they were over chasing for a few kills while Duke was just farming and farming and farming, because there was a big difference, difference between the two top laners. And then we had this chase from Gamsu and the rest of the team where they trade one for one and two for two, and that's the thing about SKT as well. So good at making the best out of what could be a bad situation. Meant Duke got to farm back into the game, and he ended actually a buff uh, Gamsu and CS. I, I didn't get to talk about Duke that much either, but he used to be under the name Leopard, came here two years oh, yeah, ago, that's right. yep. and uh, won with the KT Bullets, went undefeated throughout the whole tournament, playing Ryze, and now he's back here again, and he has been the best top laner for me at this tournament so far. Picked up a lot of kills and helped to carry that game. Well, both these teams got something in common. They listen to their coach. We'll see how it works out between the two games. Let's get over to the expert desk to take us through that game. Thank you very much, gentlemen. And uh, yeah, what a good game. I think Fnatic may be showing up a little more than somewhat expected. Uh, let's start with some of the team compositions and the picks and bands. What did you make of that last pick, Zed, and uh, how Fnatic played out the early game? Yeah, I think the poppy was really important because Fnatic showed that they have like a lot of physical damage stacked in, and the second Poppy gets like two or three items. There's no way that Poppy can actually die in this game, and I think Duke showed why, like he's such a good player. He had like the perfect zoning in like the, I think in that one Baron team fight around mid lane. He just zoned both carries alone and almost killed them one on two. So, yeah, I think SKT's team fighting was just, like a lot better in that game, and as the game has progressed, there was like it was so much harder to find these picks, and then of course Faker with the really good reactions of the QSS flash out of the Lee Sin kick. Yep. Yeah. The unrelenting aggression that Fnatic did, though, to get here in the finals kind of wasn't there this game because they went for the Karma pick. And uh, while we were watching that fight over a couple of times, Mithy, you had a, a point about uh, Clyde, his role in that team fight when he went for the Q flash on three men instead of maybe peeling. Yeah, at that point, Ezra was dead anyway. So what, if, if, he just, if he just peeled for, for his Kogmo, I think Fnatic had the upper hand in that team fight and would have been able to win it convincingly. But he, he wanted to go for the for the place and it just didn't pay off. Yeah, and to touch on that real quick, that's why I think it's it might be better for Fnatic to just keep taking these picks where they can keep going ham into the team fight because Kai's been doing a good job following up on engages, landing multiple knockups. But in this in this composition, his role was actually to just peel for reckless. But when you're on stage and you have these nerves and you just want to make the play all the time, you sometimes forget to look at your AD carry and protect them. And if he has something with a gap close or just pure raw damage coming out of reckless, it might be a better approach. Um, as for the Zed pick, I think, yeah, he got countered late game by just yeah. stacking armor, and that's the, the risk of this composition. Fnatic well, were lacking magic damage. Let's take a look at some replays that we've got together. Uh, Mithy, let's call the first one up on your screen. It's actually taking a look at the lane swap, uh, and then the option by SKT to try and push, uh, and then the, the wave gets frozen out. Explain to me what's happening. Yeah, so SKT decides to push out the wave here, which is, in my opinion, not the right choice. I think they should bounce just like Fnatic is doing right now, because now Fnatic bases catches that wave that SKT is trying to push out because they don't manage to push it out completely, freezes the wave, gives the freeze to their top laner, and then uh, after a while we can see their top laner gets that freeze and ends up being 30 CS ahead. So, Mithy, this replay is going to carry on for another 30 or 40 seconds as we watch the mechanics, and then it's also going to show the attempt to dive up top here. So, 
Yeah, yeah he, he'll hear this dive. Um, Gra Gragas just, just, just misplaced. Uh, I think that the dive is good, they can dive easily, but Gragas greets for an auto-attack here instead of just ulting straight away, which the auto-attack was not necessary at all, and they, they, they just... That, that was free first blood. Yeah, that stuff like that just triggers the fish, yo. He's actually... <laughs> He has to, he, he moves yeah, over as he waves his, his chicken, he's eating chicken. This is the only thing I can do to deal with this pain is just eat some fried chicken right now. Just to quickly finish off that as well, right at the end, we caught a glimpse of the mini-map. You could see Gamsu on Trundle, he was down, uh, farming up that frozen lane. He'd already got a 15 CS advantage because of what we'd shown two minutes earlier. Uh, and that continued to at least keep him a little bit more relevant. But it didn't really work out. The mid-game or the early game wasn't quite as aggressive as maybe Fnatic wanted. Do you think that's fair, Dexter? I mean, yeah, I think Fnatic was on the back foot the entire time. And I think Feverman even got the solo kill. But if you look at the CS, I mean, we say like one, one kill is like yeah. what, 16 CS. <laughs> it was down like 30 CS. It doesn't, didn't matter at all. And um, the only job of Corky in this game is like just push in the wave 15 minutes and have the four other people just play around the map. And I think that's what SKT did. And Fnatic just got choked out. Of course, there was like here, the yeah. misplay here and there from SKT. We talked about this clean mid game. We haven't seen it this time from um, SKT, but Fnatic played really well. And I have to yeah. like compliment Spirit. Like, really well, talking about things. Spirit, uh, he definitely should be using the Plays.tv extension. You guys know the deal. Check it out in the Chrome store. It will allow you to just instantly cut up your stream and post it to social media. Pull up the second replay when you guys can because it's just spirit things. It's spirit being spirit. Krep, I'm gonna throw this one to you because he catches Faker out and when we were watching it, you were really impressed by this play. Yeah, like I was, I, I saw Faker dive and see what happened in the first play. And because it looks so simple, oh my God, yeah, Krep, he war dashes forward and then he kicks back. But many people, especially like in an online environment, they expect that that will always be flashed because it seems so, Stupidly simple, but he comes out of fog of war, completely surprises Faker, and he, the fact that he's landing all these kicks against some of these these top world class players over and over shows that he just really understands where he has to be uh, for engages, and that that's why I likely seen as a pick by top tier junglers. And that's slow, that's slow motion, like. It was actually, it's Super actually pretty fast <laughs> game, you know? <laughs> Especially if you don't expect it, it's much faster than you guys think. <laughs> yeah, because coming from the front to actually kick somebody in the team is, isn't really done anymore because everybody will just respect Flash, but to nail that then means you really understand the, the flow of the game. He did it really fast. It was like war jump kick Flash, like, no, no, no time for Faker to he react. He must be smart Faker casting. To react, so, yeah. that, see, that's <laughs> the sentence. Smart casting. No time for Faker to react. Uh, we do have one last replay, and I think so. That was Spirit doing Spirit things that was good. And then the last replay is Fnatic doing Fnatic things, which is not so good. Uh, this was the aggressive teleport where they tried to single out either Bang or Faker. And yep. uh, maybe Dexter, talk me through the decision yeah, making. Sure. Yeah. We have like a good flank here right now, but if you look at Ezreal, there's no way that Ezreal should actually die here. Just, yeah, Zed collapses, gets kicked in. Of course, now he dies, but look at Duke. Duke is just zoning both carries out of the team fight, and he's one on twoing them at this point, while the rest of SKT just kites backward and kills the front line faster. Like at this point, Duke is just unkillable. Here's, here's where Clay, uh, in my opinion, took the wrong decision to go for the uh, three-man pulverize. If he would have, if he would have peeled on the TP, Ezra was already dead. He didn't need to do anything there. Obviously, it's much easier to criticize analyze. from 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 the analyst desk. Yeah. <laughs> you, you're starting to like this, isn't it? Don't, aren't you? You know, it's a lot easier. You can just uh, criticize all these players. Yeah. But yeah, his in his mindset, he sees the three-man pulverize. Uh, Fnatic have been playing super aggro comp so far. The Ezra kind of was just already dead, though. If we we we, we played the fight a couple of times. If Clyde goes back, peels off Duke, maybe Fnatic win that fight. But later in the game, the same questions will still be there. How will they deal with Duke's with push? Who can just stack armor? Because yeah. at this point, he didn't even have Tormil yet. Yeah. Well, gentlemen, I think we've spoken a lot about this game. We will uh, get some thoughts on what it means for game two in just a minute. For now, we can head on the ground with Chopper standing by. Katowice, can we make some noise? I, I know you guys are saving your energy for the game, but are you having fun? There we go. It's always fun to stand here and be like, what am I going to tell you first? Because I have an array of questions and whatnot, but what we're going to talk about first is going to be how are some of you guys watching the grand finals right now between Fnatic and SKT? Shall we take a look? We are watching I Am In My Bedroom in Athens. And pick some bands doing some algebra. All right. Uh, that does not necessarily sound like fun, but once the game starts, I'm sure you had a lot of fun watching that match. Watching SKT versus TSM. That was earlier today with your daughter, Ari. That is adorable. Watching it with the family. 
That's just awesome. I think we have one more. That's how we're watching the I am get Katowice. GG well played. You're right here. You're way up there somewhere. Probably see you right now, but I wouldn't be able to pick you out. Sorry about that one. But glad you guys are all having fun. Continue to send us your photos of how you're enjoying it because we're not done yet. We've only had that one game so far in the grand finals. And it's still a little too early to tell how many more games we're going to have today. In the meantime, we did ask you guys and constantly continue to put in your votes about who you think is going to win. Who's going to take that trophy at the end of the night here in Katowice? So far, 56% of you for Fnatic. All the props to you. And because of that, we're already seeing Febivan out for blood against Faker. We'll see if that can continue as we go into the next game. Last but not least, if you missed out some parts of the games, if you've missed out on the earlier games, you want to catch up, of course, the Score Esports is your place to go. You can download their app from the App Store or Google Play, and you can catch up on all the news, the stats, and more from their app right on your phone. In the meantime, then, we will go to a quick break, and when we return, we'll find out if SKT continues their reign. PC is dated 